The future is here! Nah, I'm not talking about spacesuit onesies or living underground. I mean some cool stuff like teleporting, space travel, understanding your dogs, and so on. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg emphasized that augmented reality could teleport people to any location they wanted, whether it was for work or just having a relaxing day at the beach. With the metaverse in play, entering a virtual room is already happening. The metaverse is a virtual space where people can interact and socialize with each other through technology. It'll make you feel like you're physically present in the same place as other people, rather than just typing in a chat box. Imagine gaming or working remotely, but having a clear view of your office at the same time. You can achieve anything you need to do at work, and also save time and money you'd spend on commuting. The only downside of working remotely is the lack of socialization. But being in the metaverse will let you feel like you're not alone. The screens will be interactive, and communicating with your coworkers, friends, and family will look cooler. Even though we're not there yet with physical teleportation, virtually we can pin ourselves anywhere we want. Nanobots are called this way because they're really, really tiny. These robots are designed to perform specific tasks inside the human body for medical reasons. Once inside, they start acting on their own without the need to be controlled. Oh, and they can multiply like our cells. Now, we've often heard the word nanobots tossed around in sci-fi movies, but it's not that far-fetched. They're designed to perform super-specific tasks, especially in the world of medicine. Think of them as little mini-doctors inside your body that are accurate enough to diagnose the problem and prescribe treatment. Everyone will be healthier than before with these little bad boys. Now, every year, the population of Earth increases, the cause of which has been linked to babies. This means a higher demand for food. There's only so much space in urban areas, so farms will soon have to be located in the most unconventional places, like skyscrapers or in the air. And in the air means structures that can support vegetation on platforms. A prominent architect, Javier Pons, designed a building with three levels powered by solar panels on the top. The middle layer will grow various vegetables and fruits that will get nutrients from liquid instead of soil. The remains of the plants will drop to the bottom layer to feed fish, which can also be grown for food. Each structure will be large enough to support an entire city if needed. Skyscrapers can also host some mini farms on rooftops to support neighborhoods. A lot of greenery in cities will reduce pollution and essentially lower temperatures in hot places. Now, what about our cute little pooches? Ah, we all love coming home to our dogs, sprinting up to us and jumping around. They're either saying, feed me, I'm starving, or please don't ever leave me again. But what if we could figure out exactly what they're saying? Well, we've developed technology to understand our dogs clearer with the help of a mood collar. You put the device on your dog, and a digital screen indicates your dog's mood by colors. We already know that dogs speak to us or other dogs using their body language. A wagging tail is a sign of excitement or happiness. Snarling and exposed teeth mean aggression and back off. And of course, there's barking. Some barking noises can be warnings. Others might be friendly greetings. Artificial intelligence will help us understand what our dogs are telling us by recording them on our phones. It's important that the app sees the dog's body language, too including the pooch's ears, tail, eyes, mouth, and so on. The app will then send this information to the cloud. The AI technology will decode this data by studying thousands of hours of animal footage and picking up the right expressions and sounds. This will allow vets to better understand their dog patients and prevent any harm that can follow. It will also help train dogs not to be too friendly to delivery people or pedestrians walking by in the park. The future of commuting lies in the air. No longer will we have to wait at a red light, counting the seconds till it turns green so we can make it on time to work. What if we use flying taxis as a means of human transportation? Hey, now we're talking! Electric air taxis are becoming a thing for transporting people. Amazon is experimenting with air deliveries, and they're proving to be a success. 
Flying machines have sensors that can notice hazards like birds, wires, and large objects. It's up to countries to adopt this new form of transportation. Even though air deliveries are available, authorities still need to figure out how to organize them, create rules, and set up safety measures. As for air taxis operated by people, we have to consider who is eligible to drive them or what kind of models can be produced. But we might see the sky filled with air taxis already in our lifetime. The future of fast food is about to change pretty soon. There are already digital cashiers where you can order food using a touchscreen and pay there without interacting with a human. Mmm, still want fries with that? Japan has pizza vending machines where you can buy freshly baked pizzas. Companies are creating robots that can prepare a burger and fries menu. They're quick and accurate. They won't add too much cheese or forget the onions. All these robots need someone to maintain them. Now, imagine going to a fast food joint and not seeing a single human in front of you. You place your order with a digital cashier after customizing it. You pay and watch the robots at work. You'll likely see mechanical arms lifting the deep fryer and preparing a burger in front of you. Don't expect to see a humanoid chef preparing your meal. Robots are designed to perform specific tasks. That's why mechanical arms are more than enough. And if the future is flying delivery robots, there won't be any hassle of someone getting stuck in traffic while bringing your meal. Booking a ticket across the world is easy. But what if you could go to space for fun? Many major space travel companies like SpaceX and Virgin Galactic are looking for ways to turn space into a new tourist hub. It may go as far as the International Space Station or just to the border between the atmosphere and what is considered space. There's also the idea of a space elevator that could send people to the International Space Station. It'd be a tall structure based on Earth and reaching space with an elevator moving passengers up and down. This would make space travel very accessible for anyone and cheaper than launching a rocket into space. There might be a future where the internet will be available everywhere around the world, no matter where you are. It's crazy, but only half of the world's population is online. Companies like Google see the internet as a human right and are trying to use helium balloons to beam it to remote places. Other companies are trying a different approach, like sending microsatellites into space, each the size of a cat. Meow. This will be a game changer for everyone to have access to the internet which essentially means free knowledge for all. Imagine good old bricks being able to store energy to power your house. This project is still in its very early stages, but scientists in America are developing something called smart bricks that could be the future of construction. Each wall can store so much energy that it'll last for many hours. A special coating known as P-Dot will harness electrodes, ultimately converting the bricks into powerful batteries. The red pigment in the bricks is made of iron oxide, which also helps them store energy. This will make a smart home even smarter. 200 years ago, 1821. Someone's knocking on your second floor window. It's morning. You look out. There's a guy with a long pole walking down the street, tapping on everyone's windows. Weird. Well, not really. He's a knocker-upper. Seriously. Before alarm clocks were standard in every bedroom, these people used to walk through the streets, waking people up so they weren't late for work. Well, you get up and go to the bathroom. There's just a chamber pot. Great. Well, <laughs> it's state-of-the-art. Fast forward 200 years. 2021. Your favorite song wakes you up. Not too loud, not too soft. You open your eyes, grab your phone, turn off the alarm, and scroll, scroll, scroll. Mm. It's time to get out of bed and go to work. You take a shower, brush your teeth, make coffee, and boil two eggs for breakfast. Ten minutes later, you put on your business casual and go outside. Car, highway, traffic jam. Now, back then, there's an iron basin with cold water next to the mirror, which you fetched yourself yesterday from the well. You wash your face and brush your teeth with a toothbrush made from wood and hard animal hairs. Mm. Your toothpaste? A powder made from crushed bricks, charcoal, and salt. Yum! So, did people back then have really bad dental hygiene? Actually, not as bad as you think. 
They ate unprocessed foods like wheat, rice, fresh vegetables, and fruits. This kind of natural and healthy food is pretty easy on the teeth. No preservatives, no extra chemicals. People mostly ate food that contained vitamins that made their teeth stronger and more resistant to cavities. Rich people, though, they weren't so lucky. Sugar back then was an A-list elite item, and the rich just couldn't get enough. Confectioners were constantly coming up with new candies and sweets for them. And, of course, all that sugar destroyed their teeth. And it wasn't like you could just pop over to your local dentist office. Your local dentist might also be your local barber, or even a blacksmith. The main method of dental treatment was simple. Remove, remove, remove. And you start to talk like this. Luckily, your teeth are fine. You hardly eat any sugar. You're not going to take a shower because you already washed seven days ago. Anyway, getting more water from the well seems like a lot of effort. You light a fire and put your clay plate right on the coals to bake yourself a corn tortilla-looking thing. Then you wash it down with a glass of milk. Warm, of course. You don't have a fridge. Huh? No one does. A frog is swimming in your barrel of milk. You got this tip from some weird traveler you met the other day. The frog's skin secretes a special substance that keeps microbes away. That way, your milk doesn't go sour. You only have two sets of clothes, so you're doing pretty well in life. One of them is at the tailor's right now. Your favorite suit, the one you washed in lye in the river yesterday, is dry and ready. You put it on. Ah, come on, another hole in your shirt. Those moths will eat anything. You go outside. The roads are dirty, and the smell is… Uh, intense. People pour pots of liquid out onto the street. In a few decades, every house will be connected to a water supply system. Wow! Progress! You catch a carriage, give the coach driver some coins, and hop on. Today, you're crawling down the highway. It's horrible! Hundreds of other cars, and the heat is ridiculous. You turn on satellite radio. Maybe there's something interesting happening. Ooh, awesome! The latest NASA rover just took some new photos of Mars. Well, back then, you're riding along when you suddenly hear the shouts of a newspaper seller. You ask the coach driver to stop and call out for a newspaper. The front page says that Michael Faraday just created some kind of prototype for an electric motor. You have no idea what that means, so you just flip over to the next page. Ah, the traffic jam's finally over. That sweet voice from your driving app says you'll be at your destination in a couple of minutes. Oh, the driver doesn't remember exactly how to get to where you need to go. So there's a lot of pulling over to ask passers-by for directions. You arrive at the office, sit down at your desk, open your laptop, and fire off some quick emails. Ah, oh, you finally made it to work the biggest weaving factory in town. You pass by rows of machines where workers sew clothes, go into your office, and shut the door behind you. The first ballpoint pen is still a few decades away, so you grab your trusty fountain pen. You read some letters and jot something down in your diary. Lunch break! You and your colleagues pre-order a business lunch special and chow down on it in the break room. Your lunch break starts pretty early because you need at least a half an hour to walk to the nearest restaurant. You order a vegetable stew and wait another 40 minutes for it to be cooked. After lunch, you go back to the factory. Right when you're packing up your stuff, you get the best text of the day. Your friend's having a party this evening. You RSVP with a bunch of emojis. You run out of the building and drive home to shower and change. Your hand is getting stiff from all that writing. You filled out about 40 sheets of accounting reports. A young man comes up and hands you an envelope. This is for you, sir, from Mr. Harper. The man leaves and you open the letter, sent by courier. Fancy. It's from your oldest friend. He's having a party at his house. Everyone's going to sit around and listen to his niece play some music. A fun evening. Music? The company of interesting people? Nice. You make it home, pop in the shower, and put on your most stylish, but not too stylish outfit. Ready. You whip out your phone and order a car. 15 minutes later, you're pulling up to a small house. You hear music, people chatting. This party's got potential. You leave the factory, climb into another carriage, 
and head over to your friend's house. Before that, you stop by the tailor's, pick up your other suit, and ask him to fix that hole in your shirt. The coach pulls up to an epic estate. There are already several other carriages lined up at the huge iron gate. Ladies in magnificent dresses and gentlemen in tailcoats and top hats get out. Everyone walks down the muddy path to the main entrance. Oh, this party is amazing! The dance floor is wild, and all you can see are arms waving in the air. You recognize the DJ from your Instagram feed. She just dropped another new album. You start to get into it, dancing, moving, fist pumping. It's starting to get kind of hot in here. You stroll over to the kitchen to get something cool to drink. This has got to be one of the best parties of your life. A beautiful lady starts out with a striking melody on the pianoforte. It's Beethoven's Sonata No. 31, his latest blockbuster hit. You sit on a luxurious sofa with the other guests and enjoy the music. People clap and cheer during the piece and go wild when it's over. What else would you do when you're listening to Beethoven? Yeah! You go into full head-banging mode and jump to the beat along with everyone else. The bass is vibrating through the floor, the walls, you. As soon as the concert's over, the host invites everyone to the other room for a huge buffet. Lobster, fruit, baked vegetables, fresh hot bread, rolls, red and black caviar. Yeah, you try to play it cool, but you stuff yourself until you feel like you're about to burst. There's a knock at the door and a huge delivery of pizzas, chips, and sodas arrive. Sweet! The evening's almost over. You chit-chat a little, dance a waltz, drink tea, and down some more of that fruit dessert. Then it's time to go. You walk down the muddy streets until a carriage lets you on. Before bed, you change into your nightwear, wash your face, and light a fire to keep warm. You close your eyes. You're in a weird nightmare. Some kind of dark room surrounded by strange people. There's some sort of weird noise coming from everywhere. It feels like a rhythmic earthquake. You dance, but it's more like shaking than any dance you've ever seen. You wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night. The party's over, and you're passed out on your friend's couch. You dream that you attended some beautiful old-fashioned party. Wait, isn't that Beethoven?